Hello, I'm Sula, and this is Day 7 of 8-Day Astronomer, a course in which I teach you how to become a backyard astronomer in just 8 days. And this is Day 7, so you want to buy a telescope. Well, you stuck with the program this far, so hopefully that means that you went outside and you practiced with your naked eye and your star chart or your app and you learn the brightest stars, the brightest constellations, and you tried out star hopping to locate some other stars and objects, star clusters maybe, galaxies, double stars, and you know how to find the planets, and you looked at some planets, and you know the faces of the moon, and looked at the moon with binoculars maybe, and you located some other things with a pair of binoculars. And now you're hankering to get a telescope. So what should you be thinking about when trying to decide what telescope to buy? There are three things that you need to give serious consideration to before buying a telescope. First of all, of course, you have a budget. So you know how much money you have to spend on the telescope. And number two, even more than the type of telescope and more than anything else, you need to consider and evaluate where you intend to use the telescope. Are you just going to use it in your backyard? How light polluted is your backyard? If your backyard is very light polluted, are you okay just seeing the planets and the moon? Is the sky partially blocked there? Or do you plan to take your telescope to a dark sky site so the telescope needs to be somewhat portable? Are you hoping to see faint deep sky objects? You really need to assess your observing location and watch the episode that I made on light pollution because you need to be realistic about what you'll be able to see in the night sky from your light polluted backyard. You can't just think, oh, I'll just buy a bigger telescope and then I'll be able to see faint deep sky objects from my backyard, because that is simply not true. And I'm not talking about a telescope for astrophotography Sure, you can get a telescope and put all kinds of filters on it and attachments and spend hours at a computer to overcome light pollution for your astro photos. But that's not true of a telescope that's intended for visual use. You will not be able to see faint deep sky objects from a light polluted observing site, no matter the type of telescope or the size. What I'm talking about are telescopes that are intended for visual use because this course is about visual astronomy. So once you have set your budget and you've given serious consideration to your observing site and you know the limitations that light pollution will impose on what you can see in the night sky from your observing site or your backyard or wherever you intend to observe, or you decided that you're willing to pack up your telescope and take it to a dark sky site, the third thing to consider is how much can you lift now and when you're older? Because even if you're planning to just use your telescope in your backyard, you still need to get the telescope to the backyard because you can't just poke it out of the window. And if your telescope is heavy hard to maneuver or awkward to lift by yourself, you're probably not going to use it much. And if you plan to take your telescope to a dark sky site, it needs to fit in your car and you need to be able to get it into your car and you need to be able to get it out of the car and set it up and tear it back down again in a reasonable amount of time. Those are the things that you need to seriously consider and are far more important than the type of telescope that you ultimately buy. Now let's talk about types of telescopes. First of all, telescopes will be defined by the diameter of the primary lens 
or primary mirror, and this is called the aperture, and it'll either be in inches or millimeters. And the larger the aperture, the more light the telescope can gather, and the better the resolving power of that telescope, and the more you'll be able to see in the night sky. There are three basic types of telescopes. There are refractors, and this is a refractor, and they use a lens at the front of the telescope that gathers the light, and it directs the light to the other end, where you usually have a diagonal to direct the light to the eye through the eyepiece to make it more comfortable. And there are reflectors, including Dobsonians, that use a mirror at the end of the telescope that gathers the light, and it reflects the light back to a smaller mirror at the front of the telescope that sends the light to your eyepiece and your eye. And there are catadioptric telescopes that use mirrors and lenses. And these are usually either a schmidt cassegrain or a maxutoff cassegrain telescope. There are other kinds of catadioptric telescopes that are not as common. With the refractor, there's nothing obstructing the light that's coming into it. And so they're known for having crisp, bright images. But if they don't include additional lenses called ED or extra low dispersion lenses, they're going to suffer from what's called chromatic aberration. They're called achromats, and they'll have false colors. Refractors that add extra ED lenses are called apochromatic, and they are heavier and cost more than achromats. Refractors are the most expensive type of telescope per inch of aperture. And one limitation on refractors is that commercially, you can only get up to about seven inches of aperture because after that, they're gonna to be too long, too heavy, and too impractical. You would need a personal observatory to hold one bigger than that. And that's why all professional telescopes these days are reflectors, including James Webb, which has a lot of mirrors. Reflectors have some obstruction at the front of the telescope because the secondary mirror is held in place by spider vanes usually, and that will block some of the light that's incoming. However, you won't notice it, and you can get much larger aperture in a reflector than in a refractor at a fraction of the cost of a refractor. They're the most practical and affordable. A type of reflector is the Dobsonian, and it is just a reflector telescope that comes on a daisy wheel base. So it's a complete package. And they're usually very reasonably priced, and you can get the most aperture for your budget if you get a Dobsonian telescope. The last kind of telescope is the catadioptric, and they use a primary mirror at the back of the telescope where the eyepiece goes. And in the front of the telescope is a lens or a corrector plate that's there to correct for aberrations caused by the spherical mirror. And on the back of the corrector plate will be a small secondary mirror that bounces the light back to the primary mirror and folds the light path so that the telescope can be much more compact than a Dobsonian or other reflector telescopes. But they're much more expensive than reflectors or Dobsonians. And they also have a small amount of obstruction as well, but they're wonderful telescopes with crisp, bright images as well, especially the Maxutal Cassegrain Telescope, which are known for having very sharp images in contrast, but they're limited to about seven inches in aperture. They don't make Maxutov Cassegrains bigger than that, whereas you can get enormous Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, I think currently up to 16 inches in aperture, and you can get very large aperture Dobsonian telescopes all the way up to 25 inches in aperture but those are very expensive telescopes and very big. 
So those are the three types of telescopes, but so far I've only talked about the telescope. You have to put your telescope on a sturdy tripod and a sturdy mount. The Dobsonians come on their own sturdy mount, and if you buy one, you get everything you need to get started. But anything else, you have to either buy a package that comes with the telescope and a mount and a tripod, or you can buy the telescope OTA, optical tube assembly only, and then you have to buy your own tripod and mount to put it on. Celestron sells many telescope packages in refractors and reflectors from 70 millimeters to 250 millimeters, and a lot of them are inexpensive and of reasonably good quality, but of course, for Celestron to offer these telescope packages at those prices that include a telescope, a tripod, and a mount, and usually two eyepieces, they'll cut some corners, and the corners they cut are usually in the quality of the tripod and the mount. The tripod and the mount that you get on those package deals will not be nearly as stable as a Dobsonian base is. Celestron also sells many different packages of Schmidt Cassegrain and Maxutoff Cassegrains on mounts that are called go-to mounts, meaning they're electronic and they have a computer database that allows the user to direct the telescope to a target after a simple star alignment. And these are much more expensive than the other packages I mentioned made by Celestron which are what you call manual telescope mounts, meaning you locate and point the telescope to the objects yourself. Celestron's top-selling telescope, I believe, is the Nexstar 8SE. It's an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope on a single fork arm go-to mount. And I think they go for about $1,500 an 8 inches is a good sized telescope that will allow you to see a lot in the night sky. But you can get an 8 inch Dobsonian for $600 or $700 depending on the accessories and the model. Many companies make Dobsonian telescopes so you can shop around and you can usually find a nice used 8 inch Dobsonian for sale. And an 8-inch Dobsonian is the number one recommended telescope for a beginner. You get a lot of aperture in a reasonable price. So now you know about the types of telescopes and what are the most important things for you to think about before buying a telescope. And maybe after hearing all this, you're okay just using binoculars because you can see a lot with a pair of binoculars and they're much more portable than a telescope. I just set up the three types of telescopes just to give you an idea of what's involved setting these setups. This is a refractor on a go-to electronic Altaz mount. This is a Schmidt Cassegrain also on a go-to Altaz mount. And this one is a Dobsonian, which is a type of Newtonian reflector, and it's a manual mount. You push it to wherever you want to look, and you have to find things yourself. This Dobsonian has a mirror at the bottom of the telescope. It's 254 millimeters, or 10 inches, and it has a focal length of 1,200 millimeters. So, it's a big telescope, <laughs> but this is the number one recommended telescope for a beginner. Eight inches would be a little easier to maneuver, but if you can handle it, 10 inches would be even better. <laughs> Two extra inches of aperture, but these are the three types of telescopes. Whatever you decide, just keep in mind that if the telescope is too big or too heavy or too hard to move around, you're not going to use it much. It will seem more like a chore than fun. The best telescope is the one you use the most. So I hope this was helpful 
And in the next episode, I'll tell you what kinds of things you can expect to see in a telescope. And also, some other things that you can see in the sky that don't require a telescope. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. <laughs>